Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the IdeaPad 710S Plus from Lenovo today. This is a revision of the 710S that we looked at a year ago. There's some new stuff in this one. Not a lot, but a few things that we'll look at here in this review. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is a 13 inch device, 13.3 inches to be exact. It has a 1080p display built in. This starts at around $639, which uh, for a mid-range laptop is not a bad price given the configuration that it does have on it. So this has a i5-7200U, that's a seventh generation uh, processor from Intel. We've seen this chip on a bunch of other computers we've reviewed so far this year. So I'll talk some more about uh, how well this stacks up performance-wise against some of the other ones we've looked at. Eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Unfortunately, it is configured in single channel configuration, which will limit its performance, especially in gaming, as you'll see a little later has a 256 gigabyte Intel SSD built in, and it does get some pretty decent performance, as you can see on this Crystal Disk Mark benchmark I ran earlier. So I was very pleased with the disk performance on this. And you can also upgrade the disk on this if you wish. You can pull out the bottom panel, as you can see in some footage I shot from my extras channel, and swap out that drive if you wish. But the RAM is not upgradable on this. Only the uh, SSD is. It's an M2 SATA drive, so pretty easy to swap that out. Has AC wireless, of course, so it'll work on all the latest and greatest wireless networks. Gets about seven to eight hours of battery life when you're doing web browsing, word processing, and other uh, low-end activities. Uh, the screen is not a touch display, uh, but it does go down fairly low to the surface of your desk. Surprisingly, it doesn't hit the bottom here, as you can see, but it does have a good range of motion to its hinge. It does bounce around quite a bit, but it is not a touch display, so perhaps you won't be touching the screen and making it bounce as much as you might uh, on the Yoga 720, which is a uh, all-in-one one version of what you're going to see in this review. 2.4 pounds or 1.09 kilograms. It is made out of metal, so it is a pretty uh, nicely feeling device overall. Uh, pretty uh, good industrial design to this and very similar to what we saw uh, with last year's model. Not fanless though, so you will have some air vents you'll need to keep clear here on the bottom as well as over in the middle point here because it kind of vents out in between the hinge here. The fan does come on quite a bit and you'll hear it a lot more when you first get the laptop. This was something that came up in my Yoga 720 review uh, because the fan will be running because the computer is updating itself in the background. Uh, after those initial updates are done, it will come on less as you're using it, but it does have a fan. And if you're sensitive to fan noise, you're going to hear it quite a bit. It's not any louder than other laptops I've used, but uh, some viewers have written in saying that these fans on these little laptops are pretty noisy. And if you are sensitive to that, uh, you might want to look at something a little less powered, but uh, without a fan built in. As for ports, it is pretty minimal here. We've got a USB 2.0 port over here. There's a full-size SD card slot here on the side for putting in camera cards and that kind of thing. Uh, your card will stick out quite a bit here, as you can see, so this won't be an option for augmenting onboard storage. Uh, just keep that in mind. On the other side here, you've got a USB 3.0 port, so that'll be the faster USB port of the two. It also stays powered when the laptop is off, so if you want to charge your phone when the laptop is sleeping or not in use, uh, you can just plug it into that port and it will always be charging so long, I think as, as long as the laptop is plugged into power. Power goes in over here. You have a USB type C port here. This is new for this edition of the laptop. But this is not a Thunderbolt port. So we looked at the Yoga 7 2013 a few weeks ago. That one has a full-blown Thunderbolt port on the side. This one is just USB Type-C, and it's also a little more limited in what you can do with it. So it does uh, video output for external displays and whatnot, uh, and it also does data for USB devices, but it does not do power. You have to plug the power into the power adapter here, uh, not in here. Even if you have a uh, powered hub or something, it won't provide any power to the laptop through the USB Type-C connector. And then, of course, right here, you have your headphone microphone jack. On the front, you've got a fingerprint reader for a quick access to unlock the computer. The keyboard is my biggest gripe on this one. Same issues I've been having with this design of Lenovo keyboards from their uh, prior generation industrial design. This is a new laptop, but it's running with last year's keyboard, essentially. And uh, what I don't like about these keyboards is they put the shift key over here, and it's right next to the arrow key. And I'm frequently hitting the up arrow when I mean to hit shift. If 
you've been watching my videos for a while, I complain about this all the time. Uh, the good news is the uh, new Yoga 720s that we looked at a few weeks ago uh, have corrected this issue. So it looks like Lenovo is improving their keyboard design on future models. But uh, this one, which is kind of the budget in this line of laptops with this uh, particular processor, are still running with last year's design. And the keyboard just is not as good as the new ones are. So if you're very sensitive to bad keyboards, uh, the 720 might be the better way to go. The trackpad isn't bad. It's a little squishier than I would like, but it does track quite well and uh, performs its job adequately. And by the way, the keyboard here is backlit. So let's take a look now and see how this laptop performs with some real world applications. We've got uh, the web browser here running, of course, with YouTube running at 1080p at 60 frames per second, not seeing any dropped frames, but that is no surprise given what we have for a processor in here. These KB Lake chips do really well with that. Uh, web browsing is also pretty snappy on here as well, given that uh, we've got the wireless AC and again, a pretty uh, sizable processor here serving everything up to us. I don't think you're going to have any issues whatsoever uh, doing all the basics with this laptop. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 109, which does put it below a bunch of other laptops running with this very same i5 processor, including Lenovo's Yoga 720, as well as the Microsoft Surface laptop. And I think the reason this one is a little slower is that it is running with single channel memory, whereas those other laptops have RAM configured in dual channel which means that they can get uh, data in and out of the processor just a little bit faster, which I think will show up in a test like this. You may not notice it when you're actually using it, but there is a definite performance difference on this benchmark between uh, this laptop and others running with the same chip. But when you're actually using the laptop and just getting work done on it, I don't think you're going to notice all that much of a difference here. Microsoft Word feels about the same to me here on this newsletter template, even as I adjust graphics and rearrange text and everything, uh, performance feels about where those other laptops did. So really, it's going to be a difference between benchmark performance, at least for web browsing and productivity versus those other laptops. But gaming, there is a difference. Let's take a look at a few games on here and see what that memory difference might do to performance. So let's kick things off with Minecraft here. We've got a very respectable 70 frames per second or thereabouts on here running with the Optifine performance enhancing plugin at 1080p. So that's not too bad for a a uh, low-end casual game, but let's take a look now at something that's a little more demanding like Rocket League, and then we'll get to some benchmarks. So I've got Rocket League loaded up here. I've got everything turned down on the settings, but I did leave the resolution at 1080p. And one of the things I've been seeing with these new Intel KB Lake processors is better graphics performance. And we're seeing some of that here. I'm getting frame rates around 30 frames per second or so. So it's actually playable here with all the settings turned down. The game doesn't look so great, uh, but it is playable and we're getting a passable frame rate. But it's a little slower than what I've seen on some other uh, i5 processors from this generation. Not a lot, but enough that there is a bit of a difference. But like we saw with that web-based benchmark test, we're also seeing lower scores here on gaming benchmarks. I ran the 3 Mark CloudGate test, and we got a score of 5,129. And of note here is that the Lenovo Yoga 720, with that same processor built in, performed a lot better on the first two graphics tests, as you can see here. And the reason is uh, the Yoga 720 has dual channel RAM. It's able to get uh, data in and out of that processor a lot faster. And that makes a big difference for the built-in Intel graphics that uh, power the games you might try to play on this computer. There's a real difference here between uh, dual channel and single channel. And this really is where you'll see it. Uh, also take a look at the IdeaPad 710S from last year. We're getting very similar graphics uh, scores on that one uh, versus this one. So from the standpoint of overall gaming performance, if you're going to use this as a gaming PC, which of course I don't recommend, uh, you will see pretty much the same performance you saw out of last year's version. So you might want to look at that one if you can find one for less money because there really isn't a huge difference here in gaming performance. But there is a difference when it comes to playing high bitrate HEVC video with these KB Lake chips. So here is our uh, jellyfish test file that I take a look at in all of my reviews. And you can see where to find these in the uh, link down below in the video description. This is a 140 megabits per second HEVC 4K movie that's being downsampled, of course, to the 1080p display here. And uh, this is running without any dropped frames because uh, we're able to do the decoding of this video in hardware, which is what the seventh generation Intel chips support. And this is not something that you can do on uh, the prior generation chips as nicely as you're seeing here. So this is one area where 
uh, the KB Lake processors will make a difference, especially for this kind of video playback. Uh, Blu-ray MKV files also play back just fine. They'll work fine on older versions of this as well. But if you are looking to play back a lot of high bitrate video using Kodi like I'm doing here, I think you can definitely do that very comfortably with this computer, just like we've seen on many other uh, i5 and i7 based KB Lake processors in this generation and the i3s too, for that matter. They've really done a nice job improving some of the video performance and uh, this laptop is no exception. So overall, not a bad little laptop for the price. And I think though, if you can uh, spend or can afford to spend up to about $800, the, uh, the Yoga 720, which we uh, looked at and reviewed quite extensively down below in the video description is probably the better way to go. I think it's a better laptop. It has a uh, better performance, of course. It does have the Thunderbolt ports. So you have some more functionality if you want to use it as a desktop with a dock, for example. So uh, that one's a little better. And of course, I really don't like the keyboard on this one either, which has really uh, been bugging me on this generation of Lenovo keyboards. The keyboard on the 720 is a lot better, but if you can't make that jump from $639 or thereabouts to $800, uh, then this is not a bad starting point for the performance that you're getting. Uh, just know that this is really not well suited for gaming, but uh, will do well with just about everything else. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.